In this topic, we're going to have a look at osmosis and cells. So by the end of this topic, you should be able to understand osmosis in animal cells. How do some unicellular organisms maintain their osmotic balance? Osmosis in plant cells and how do we find the osmotic concentration or water potential of plant cells? Just to recap, pure water has a water potential of zero. So solute makes the water potential lower or more negative. So water always moves by osmosis from a higher water potential, which um, has a less negative value, to a lower water potential, which has a more negative value. In the previous topic, we looked at the definition of osmosis and why it occurs. You need to define osmosis in terms of hypotonic and hypertonic. So osmosis is the net movement of water molecules from a hypotonic solution, which has a high water potential, to a hypertonic solution, which has a low water potential. And this occurs across a partially permeable membrane. So have a look at this diagram. Which way will water move by osmosis? It's going to move from a hypotonic solution to a hypertonic solution. Now if a red blood cell is placed in pure water, which is hypotonic, water will move into the cell by osmosis because the external solution has got a higher water potential and we say it's hypotonic. Now the cell surface membrane is very thin and although um, it's flexible, it can't stretch to a great extent. So the cell surface membrane will eventually break as water is moving in and the contents of the cell will be leaked out. So this is known as hemolysis. So to prevent cells from bursting, they're placed in a solution that's got the same water potential as the cells. An example is 0.9% sodium chloride solution. So the external solution and the cell are isotonic, and there's no net osmosis. So there'll be no change in the red blood cell. So if a red blood cell is placed in a solution which is hypertonic, water is going to move out of the cell by osmosis because the external solution has got a lower water potential and it's hypertonic. The cell is going to shrink and the membrane is going to crinkle. Now how do paramecium maintain their osmotic balance? Paramecium usually live in a hypotonic environment, which means that water diffuses from the outside of the cell to the inside of the cell. They need to be able to remove this water, and they remove it by active transport. So they've got special little organelles, so you can see an organelle on the left there, called a contractile vacuole. These contract and force water out of the paramecium. So here you can see the different steps. Water enters due to osmosis. It collects in the contractile vacuole. This vacuole is going to expand, move to the edge of the cell, and expel the water by exocytosis. In the same way, an amoeba, which is a unicellular freshwater protoctist, will have contractile vacuoles. The water will enter the cell, it's going to enter into the vacuole and the vacuole will move to the edge of the cell and expel the water back into the environment by exocytosis. So before we begin with the explanation of the plant cell, there are three parts that you need to understand. The first is the central vacuole and this contains cell sap which has a solution of salts, sugars and organic acids and water. Then there's the protoplast, and this includes the outer cell surface membrane, the cytoplasm, and the tonoplast, which is the vacuole membrane. Now plant cells contain solutes dissolved in the central vacuole. When they're put in pure water, they're going to absorb water by osmosis. Why don't plant cells burst? This is because they've got a cellulose cell wall. And this cellulose cell wall has got an arrangement of beta glucose molecules, which gives it strength. 
So as water enters the cell by osmosis, it's going to cause the living portion of the cell, the protoplast, to swell and push against the cellulose cell wall. Because the cell wall is capable of only limited expansion, a pressure is going to build up on it that resists the further entry of water. We call this the pressure potential. So this prevents more water entering and this is going to increase the water potential in the cell and cause it to become less negative. So the protoplast is kept pushed against the cell wall and it's said to be turgid or the cell is said to be turgid. Okay, let's go through it step by step. In a hypotonic solution such as pure water, the water will move into the vacuole, into the cell and then into the vacuole. The external solution's got a higher water potential and it's hypotonic. The protoplast is going to push on the cell wall. So what's going to happen next? The cell wall stretches slightly but it resists further expansion. So the pressure potential increases and this resists further expansion in the cell. So we say that the cell is now turgid. In a hypertonic solution, water will move out of the cell and out of the vacuole by osmosis. The external solution has got a lower water potential and it's hypotonic. So as water is moving out of the cell, so it's becoming more concentrated. The solution is becoming more concentrated in the cell. So we say that the solute potential is becoming more negative because the concentration is increasing. The turgid falls, so the pressure potential decreases. It's going to decrease until the pressure potential is equal to zero. At this point, we say that the cell is flaccid and plasmolysis is about to begin. Now, if you remember the equation for water potential, water potential is equal to solute potential plus pressure potential. If the pressure potential is zero, what will the water potential be equal to? The water potential is going to be equal to the solute potential. This is when we say that the plant, or this is what we call incipient plasmolysis. Okay, water is going to continuously move out of the vacuole and out of the cell. Eventually it's going to be plasmalized. So the protoplasm is going to shrink and the membrane is going to be pulled away from the cell wall. In severe cases, the plasmodesmata are going to be damaged and the cell will be destroyed. Okay, so you should remember the equation for water potential. This is solute potential plus pressure potential. Remember that the solute potential has always got a negative value and the pressure potential has always got a positive value. So here you can see what will happen if you put a plant cell in pure water. I want you to have a look at the pressure potential values, how they change. So in pure water, the pressure potential value is increasing until eventually there's going to be a point where the overall water potential is going to be zero. What's going to happen at that point? It means that no more water can enter into the cell. So how do we find the osmotic concentration of potato strips now that you know pressure potential, solute potential? If you put potato cylinders or strips into different solutions of varying concentration of sucrose and then you weigh them after a certain time period, you can calculate the percentage change in mass and then you're going to plot the graph against the concentration of the external solution. So you should notice that the percentage change of mass will decrease. Okay, how do you find what the concentration of your um, the inside of the potato is? You look at where the percentage change of mass is zero, and then you draw a line downwards. So the concentration of sucrose at which there's no change in mass of the potato is the same as the concentration within the potato strip. So in other words, the water potential of the external solution is equal to the water potential of the cell.
So how is incipient plasmolysis useful? We can use this to find out the concentration or the water potential within a cell. So water potential is equal to solute potential plus pressure potential. Incipient plasmolysis occurs when the concentration brings about 50% plasmolysis of cells. So this is when the pressure potential is zero. So that the water potential is equal to the solute potential, and we call this incipient plasmolysis. So, in summary, I want you to copy down this table. You've got external solution, water potential of external solution, net movement of water, state of cell. So, when a red blood cell is put in a hypotonic solution, the external solution has got a higher water potential, so water will enter the cell. Eventually the cell is going to swell and burst. In an isotonic solution, the external solution is isotonic. The water potential is equal. The water neither enters nor leaves, so there's no net osmosis, and there's no change in the state of the cell. In a hypertonic solution, the external solution's got a lower water potential. Water leaves the cell and the cell will eventually shrink and the membrane will crinkle. Plants. In a higher water potential, the water will enter the cell. The protoplast will swell and the condition of the cell is said to be turgid. When the water potential is equal, Water neither enters nor leaves the cell, there's no change, and the condition of the cell is incipient plasmolysis. And then when the cell is placed in a lower water potential, water leaves the cell, the protoplast shrinks, and the cell is eventually going to become plasmolyzed. And that concludes our lesson, the end.